My name is Amy Dulo. I'm a registered nurse. Um, I work on the bone marrow transplant floor at Cincinnati Children's. Um, I've been there for about a year now. People might look at me and, you know, think I have it all together. I'm young, you know, what do I have to worry about or deal with? But anxiety is a journey and it's something I'm going to have to, you know, manage and deal with for the rest of my life. When I was younger, I thought that was just my normal and I didn't think anything different of it. In college, like my sophomore, junior year is when it really presented itself. I think just wanted to perform so well. Our classes, we had to get like certain grades, so that was really stressful for me to be like, you know, I have to get a certain score on this or I'm not gonna make it through the program. But I also had all these other things going on um, and I would just get feelings of, feel like pressure on my chest, would like begin to like hyperventilate, crippling to a point where you just don't know what to do and it can be scary. Okay, this is something maybe I can't handle on my own. You know, the world can be a very confusing place. You have chaos on one side, order on the other, and you can't have one without the other. It's very hard on people to navigate their emotional world. As a counselor, I think it's my job is really help people understand that pain and suffering come along with love and peace and joy. And I just find it interesting and a privilege to help people understand that truth. But then once I realized I needed help, I think counseling was really life-changing for me. Here at Southbrook, I met Randy, and that's where I learned a bunch of tools to help me cope with my anxiety. When Amy came uh, for the first time, uh, my, my primary job is to invite God into that room. And I do that by just letting her share her story. An unspoken story, an unrealized story, um, will eventually become toxic. The fact that you're willing to talk to somebody about the things that keep you stuck, that's your solution. I remember the first couple sessions with him, I would just cry. Anything he would bring up was just very, I think, emotional for me. And my mission, my goal was to never feel that emotion anymore. I wanted to have the tools and learn how to never feel anxiety again. We're focused on the wrong thing as the problem. Emotion is not the problem. So to help Amy to think differently, that maybe God gave me this emotion to feel to help me. I would let those feelings of negative self-talk take over where I wasn't hearing maybe that voice of the Holy Spirit or God. An unconfessed lie is territory where a truth can't enter. But then she began to evaluate those thoughts. Are they true? No, they're all lies. And once she began to insert specific truths that counteracted the lies, God began to reveal to her the truth. So I think for me that's been a big thing, just how changing how I'm thinking and being able to hear that voice and hearing the Holy Spirit through me and what is true. You know, I'm just, you know, not an anxious person and that doesn't have to be my identity. And I am a child of God and um, being able to infuse my faith and beliefs with my tools together has helped me grow through that and just be able to manage my anxiety. I. I think I view my anxiety maybe as a blessing in that way because I think it pushed me to have more of a relationship with God. Um, just even praying and for a calm heart and I could feel that, you know, God was in control of the situation. Uh, the character that she began to develop 
by facing the fears that she had, facing the obstacles that she had, and not looking back. And in my opinion, she's the hero of the story. She's the one that put into practice 